Lord, we ask you to open up the eyes of our hearts, O oh God. We want to see you. We want to see you lifted high. Be glorified, O oh God, in our songs that we sing in our midst, Lord.
Welcome to another new series nato as we discuss the names of Yahweh or the names of God and we understand more of him throughout history there are many times in the Bible where he is described or called to with a specific name and many of those times gigamit lang only once for a particular time and those times should resound in order for us na masabta nato kinsa ang ginuo ug tungod ana bag uta magsugod Let's all bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord God, we'd like to thank you for starting in us a new series. Thank you for giving us the wisdom to be able to learn more about you and even giving us examples and even the word, na inspired word ni mo Lord through the Bible for us na maila ka namo in a deep and personal way until the time na maila ka namo, ila-ila ka namo fully when we meet you in heaven. So thank you Lord for so good ang series and even for discovering for allowing us to discover more of you over time. We thank you and we dedicate this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today, magsugod ta with Yahweh Nisai. In the Bible, it is used here in Exodus chapter 17. Oh, let's read together. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side, and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner. 
So we discover here in this story nga nagsugod ni Gi, proclaim ni Moses after they have won over the Amalekites. O kaning war na nahitabo sa ilaha, Moses was on the top of the hill with the staff of God. And whenever tas unyang kamot niya, he would see the army winning. And then if he would lower his hands, makita niyang army sa Israel would lose to the Amalekites. So na ay going back and forth in their fight, depending on how his hands were raised. After they have won the battle, Moses built an altar. And dito niya gitawag ang ginoo, giproclaim niya ang ginoo sa usa kanya pangalan, which is ang Yahweh Nisai. Now, most of us, for us to have a clearer defining of terms, no, na, most of us use this as Jehovah Nisai. Now, as you know, and as we have discussed in previous series, the more we learn about the Bible, the more we refrain from using the word Jehovah. Because Jehovah is a term na ginagamit, which is a mistranslation from the YHWH, which are the consonants retained. So, gamit nila ang vowels of Adonai and gibutang nila ang term because they have forgotten how to use the name of the Lord properly in fear, mahadluk sila na ma-misuse to nila, which is one of the Ten Commandments that you shall not misuse the name of the Lord or use the name of the Lord in vain. So, tungod ana, sa kahadluk nila sa paggamit atong word, pila ka generations na wala na ginagamit ang word na limta nila. The, the letter na nabilin dito na limta nila how to, what vowels to use in order to describe it. And then later on, gigamit nila ang Adonai and it was transformed, which is a generic type of Lord. And gibutang nila into those na himo siyang Yehovah or Jehovah. But as we know, um, going, studying back in history, the actual word is actually Yahweh. So we use the word Yahweh Nisai. And whenever we read the Old Testament particularly, pag capital L-O-R-D na siya, ang gigamit diha in the Bible sa writing, the original manuscript is Y-H-W-H, which is Yahweh. Para mawala lang ang, ang confusion ninyo why we use the word Yahweh. This battle is very memorable para sa people of Israelites because ang, ang story of Exodus is half-half na siya. Um, ang first half of that story is the story of Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. So sila karun, they are starting to, to build ang ilahang relationship with God as the God who is a way maker, who, is a, who, who turns seas into highways. He is a miracle maker because dagan ka plagues gipadala, he even departed the Red Sea para makaagi ang mga people and many times nag miraculously provide siya food. So as a provider, as a miracle worker, as a way maker, o kana ng mga butang. But this is the first time sa pagawas nila that they would go into a direct battle, a hand-to-hand battle with a nation versus another nation. And we see that sa, sa previous chapter na to in, verse, in chapter 15, na after they went out from the chase of the Egyptians and then nakalusot sila sa Red Sea without any scratch and then ang, ang sundalo ni Pharaoh were, were drowned in the ocean, mauni ang ilahang proclamation o mauni ang ilahang pasalamat sa ginoo here in chapter 15. Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him, my father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea. His chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Tanan diha na Lord is Yahweh. So, karong palang, they are starting in this relationship that Yahweh will be with us. Yahweh is powerful. Yahweh will shatter the enemy's hand. And you have to remember that ang story is a continuation from the generation of Joseph. Basically, they were Israelites living in a foreign land. O later on, tung namatay na si Pharaoh, which promoted Joseph to become a prime minister of the people of Israel. And if you can remember the story, gidala niya yung pamilya, gidala niya nation of Israel, the people of Israel, going into Goshen, or a land in Egypt. Pagbutang niya dito, 
uh, they, they, though they live there, but they do not identify themselves, obviously, as Egyptians. Okay, even, nakita na sa story ni Joseph, even by the time na mga on sila sa table, dili makikawal ng Egyptians with the Israelites. And vice versa, na agya po'y separation. And so, after that generation passed, niabot na kanina generation, and then, nahim, instead of continuing that friendly relationship, na daot in a relationship naging opposite and that's why that's that's part of the plan of God para to to make them go out as they were not as they were not destined to be there as the people of God they were destined to go into the promised land so pag start on a journey morning beginning of the journey and now they went into war now the significance of banner is very important because if you can remember any movies about war there's always a banner man who, who holds the banner it may not be the captain, but na it's close to the leader of the captain of that of that group or that battalion. And kanang kanang banner represents unsana siya na troop ug under kikinsana. So the banner is always used in warfare. And most probably, kani sila pag sugod din na sa gira sa Amalekites, the Amalekites already have banners. They already have established war systems. Dugay na kayo sila that existed having their own freedom and nation. Ang Israelites ani the time sugod pa sila. So kani pag sugod din sa into battle, gipakita sa Ginoo sila that he is not only the God who, who who creates miracles and and creates ways for them and provides what they need, but he also is a God that goes with them in war. And mabuto na ang ginapakita na imagery diri as Moses would raise up his hand to show kinsa mina army, kinsa among allied to, kinsa among king. That was an establishment of not only a political system, which is theocracy. Theo means God. Theocracy, a kind of government, because they were in a theocracy system, meaning ang ginoo ilang direct king. And so they would raise up that banner, but it would also for them to experience na ang ginoo is not only on the background providing what they need, but even siya, muuban siya sa ilaha sa gera. And that's why the, the word here even is used. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Your right hand, O Yahweh, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Yahweh, shatters the enemy. So those explanations are used that God is also going with them into war. This is two chapters before. O kar ipakita niya, pa display niya in power that even the, the, the strength of their hands. When I remember... A verse in Jeremiah chapter nine, if I'm not mistaken, let not the let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Let him who boasts boast in this that he knows me and understands me, that I am the Lord that practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in all the earth, and in these things I delight. Okay, that kind of verse reminds us that even ang ginoo, he is not dependent on the strength of the army. Mona, if you are, remember the story of Gideon, mabitaw na gamay lang sila in order for them not to rely on their strength. Whenever they go into war and win these battles because the, the God is their God, God is their banner, Yahweh will be with them in war. Mona, ay mo kadlo kung ingna na ko mo, asa mo mo adto. Mabitaw, when they disobeyed later on, when they tried to attack, the people in the promised land kinagsisi sila at first nag like, disbelief sila and so namawi sila giatak nila isa ka city na gamay dito na noon sila napildi because the lord was not with them the banner was not with them yahweh nisai was not with them and mo na even put mo po ng reason why si david was commanded by the lord na ayo pag take census sa mga tao before you go to war ayo ihapa imo mga tao do not make an accounting of how many people you have for war. Why? Because th that time, mang ihap na ka, pila ang army versus kani ang army. Kinsa kayay dihado? Daog ba ko ani? Di ba ko madaog ani? What the Lord is telling David is that Yahweh and Nisai will go with them into war and into any mission and therefore do not rely on your own strength. So we go to our first point and our first point is this. To put our faith in Christ is to mean to have Yahweh as our banner. This is not optional. When we have decided to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that means Yahweh is our banner. Siya ang muuban sa atua. He will be with us. 
This is not a momentary or pagkailangan lang, but He is the one that goes with us as a banner. Meaning, meaning you cannot choose as if nakaka sa buffet. Napiliyon lang nimo tong lamig na pagkaon, or gama, or di ka mukha og rice, or di ka piliyon na nimo tong sweets. Dili, it's not a buffet. Sabay na na, it's a package. Sabay na tanan, meaning you bring with him in everything in who he is, what his word says, and everything about God. That is what you represent. So when we say we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, it means Yahweh, Nisai. He is a banner. Mauban siya sa tuwa. Not only in the good times, but even in the bad times. Mabito in Luke, we are reminded, If anyone would come after me, Jesus said, Let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. If anyone would come after me, Tanan na mo, follow sa tuwa. Deny yourself. So that is a part of removing in previous na banner, whatever banner you have, whatever ideology you have, whether mo bangga ba sa what, the, what Jesus teaches, or dili, regardless, you put aside that banner. Ang banner ni mo ginadala ka rin for whatever mission, moving forward, it is Yahweh. In First Peter, we are also reminded of that. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ano ang pagtanaw ni Peter when it comes to our faith? We are a chosen race, a royal priest to the holy nation. Separate mo, lahi mo, because you are carrying my banner. Out of all the peoples in the world, you are the ones who carry my banner. Even Jesus' words in Matthew 5, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. It gives light to all in the house. It gives light. You give light to all in the house. That is your design. That is part of your belief in Christ, that is your ambition, that is your daily aim. Dili na optional, dili ka secret Christian, wherever you go, apil na sa inyong identity, you carry that as yourself, which leads us to our next point. A banner is an army's identity. Whenever you go to war, naadjoy kinahang lang banner. And sila, they trust that banner. Maubita na if there are people who are spies or a battalion na na go into a secret mission. The one way for them na para mailad to uban is they bring the banner of their enemy kung asa na spy and mutuo na sila a ah, banner to ah, banner ah, sundalo na siya sa kanila king because for them it's really important na imong banner what you wear unsa imong binuhatan unsa imong speech those really represents kinsa ang imong king o under kinsa ang kingdom ka. Pagtugod, Anna, you cannot have two banners. Dili ka pwede na ay dual life. Dili pwede na ay lahi ka sa buntag, lahi ka pag gabi, eh. or lahi ka pag Sunday, lahi ka pag weekday. No, the banner that you have is the one that you always will have. Well, di ka pwede mag-choose, pick and choose, depende what type of day, as if murag sanina. Unsa ka rin, wash day? Dili ko most dalas akong banner, kaya mas yun sa akong pwede suotun, kay wash day. Di ni school uniform. A banner is a spiritual identity that you have, who you are, what you are, why you exist, and your purpose and passion dili sa kalibutan. That is what you bring. Well, it's always a struggle because choosing God, believing in God, denying you for yourself might mean you must make very hard decisions in your life. If that is the cost of our belief, there was a man named Dietrich Bonhoeffer and siya is a Christian a German man who lived in the time during World War II. It was the rise of Hitler. So in Germany, as you know, they killed millions of Jews and millions of other people, including disabled people, autistic people, or maski unsa pa, in their ideology, in their belief that they must establish the Aryan race or a race that is perfect. My specification to blue eyes, blonde, a certain katangkad, etc. So they, they, they push that agenda and they believe that they were chosen by God to be the Aryan race. Mauna, itanggalo nila, eradicate nila, destroy nila other races that do not fit that description. 
And part of those is ang pagsisi ni Adolf Hitler towards the Jews as the reason why nagkalugmuk sa utang ang Germany. Ug tungod ana on the background you, it may, you may begin to question during World War II kung say gibuhat sa mga Christians during the time. Imagine a lot of the, the German people would kill other people would kill Jews which is part of the Judeo-Christian history of Christianity. Not everyone believed Adolf Hitler was the Messiah or the Savior, the one who would make Germany rise up to power. No. There were a lot of also Christians who really believed in the Messiah in the Bible, not a human Messiah in the name of Adolf Hitler. Ugtumud ana, they were in the background. They started small communities, small groups, house churches. Nagtago-tago sila in their meeting place. And one of those men, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, decided that he must do something. He joined the rebellion to stop Adolf Hitler in his plans. And he said this, Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, not to act is to act. And I use this saying that he has because during his time, despite atong nahitabo, he chose to do something. He chose to use his talents and gifts to choose a side. And it's like Joshua saying, Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In Alaputa, when it comes to our faith with God, we must make a decision. Kinsa atong identity. You cannot be just trying out Christianity. Or sulayan lang sa inimo if it works. Try, try lang ako. Simba, simba lang kung gamay pang bawas sa akong guiltiness, sa akong mga salat. Hindi pwede. Wala yung trial, trial when it comes to the family of God. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow after me. And actually, napay dugtong word di Jesus. For whoever saves his life will lose it. And for whoever who loses his life for my sake will save it. It's a decision. It's a yes or a no. Choose you this day. Will you follow Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Dili pwede. Maybe, try lang na ako. Try, try lang sa nato. Solayan nato. Temporary lang. No, you must make a decision. When when we will be facing the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in heaven, dili ka po abot dito na, hmm, gitry lang na ako sa una. Ah, murag nag-pray mga ta sa una. A relationship is not like that. A relationship na sa ginoo is not trial. You must make a decision. Whether ginoo ba na identity na ka or dili. Because if dili and yet you still continue to, to, to absorb the blessings in the Bible as if they were yours, the problem always is, is nati ano na tendency, we we listen to the promises of God and we take out everything that bears responsibility. Maminaw lang taon sa maka-benefit ta in the Bible and then we take out all the hard stuff from the Bible. Dili pwede na. You must take everything as a whole. That is your identity, the past, the present, the future of God portrayed in the word of God. Even kana one of the verses na tong ginagamit always in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for good and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Can I even a verse that continues on? Na ang promise na na, it's for those who know God. And even in Romans chapter 28, remind ta na, for we know that all things work together for good, nasig dugtong, for those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. Dili na siya para sa tanan. It is for those whose identity and whose love are committed to God who have made that final decision in their life that I have chosen this day to follow after God. That is why we that is why we have certain declarations of faith. When we decide to put our faith in God, we be baptized. That is a command. That is a public declaration of faith. Tinud alay na ko this time around. Dili ko try try lang. I will put my allegiance to God. I am now his ally. Katung before di na ko enemy of God because yes, the Bible looks at us because of our sins as enemies of God before we have come to reconciliation with God through the death of Jesus Christ. Matthew 6 reminds us no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So even career, even kwarta, even fame, even pleasure, that will come back, that will will put a war, a battle inside yourself na makig away siya trying to take over unsay pinaka-importante na butang si mong kinabuhi because that is trying to take over your identity. 
again, Yahweh Nisai, our banner, our identity, as we are soldiers of God. Second Corinthians reminds us we are ambassadors of Christ. Mobi daw na, the, the word used is Christians. That means little Christ. Gigamit na sa una because kato mga early believers, they did not call themselves a Christians, but ang uban nagtawag sila ng little Christ. Tungod, every time mo storya sila, ang source nila permi si Jesus Christ. Ingon sa permi, ingon biya si Jesus. Ingon biya si Jesus. Because wala sila yung written word. And ang ilaha is our word past information na mauni yung gitudlo ni Jesus. And so, na ay early apostles na katong direct na katuon from Jesus Christ himself, ipasa niya sa uban. And mo dalhon nila ng mga words, ingon si Jesus sa una, ingon si Jesus sa una. So, katong maminaw sa una, sige sila paminaw, ingon di Jesus, ingon di Jesus. Maramog mga gamay nga Kristo, kaya sige lang mong ingon, ingon ni Christ, ingon ni Jesus. That started the word. And that is, that should make an impact sa toa. A Christian, it means your identity is with Christ. He is Yahweh Nisai. Even in Galatians, the words of Paul here, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Even the Apostle Paul himself identified that ako identity now, I am now crucified. Wala na tong karaan ako sa una, but instead my allegiance is now to God. And this is the hard truth. Na dakog possibility when we become serious with the word of God, it may be a, a, a reason that momentarily ang family will be divided. Even Jesus himself says, "Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against his mother-in-law." And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Because yes, when you put your faith in God, when you put your identity in God, magic conflict within the household. Ako myself, I have experienced that. When I have professed my faith in the family as someone who is the first to be a professing Christian, ang naitabu ato na time was many of my siblings were either quietly disapproving or openly disapproving na opposite ang ilang pagtuo sa ako ang pagtuo. And that that created initially a conflict even for my parents. Nga, nga medyo dili na kayo sila ganahan because lahi na nga ako ang pagtuo sa ilahang pagtuo. And that will eventually happen when we put our faith in God. But again, as people who is into reconciliation the same way with Joseph did, what Joseph did with his brothers, is we try to build that back and we try to put them under the banner of Jesus Christ. Put, we become ambassadors of Christ. We become people whom they see as truly wearing or carrying the banner of Yahweh in their life. That brings us to our second point. A banner prepares a soldier to lay down his life for his king. As a soldier, ang imong priority is what the king wishes. Ang iyang priority, iyang life, iyang command. Mauna to imuhang kinabuhi. Mabito na, in every war, there is always sacrifice. Na mga sundalo na sila ang kinanglan isugod sa front line sila ang sugod na mo entry attack or sila pwede ang magpabilin for others to be to be to retreat uh, safely na isa ka batalyon mabilin or na iuban mo pabilin aron to hold off to stop the attack para makatakas ang uban that's normal that's a life of a soldier that is war a pieces for sacrifice in order for you to win the war and we see that in romans if we live we live to the lord if we die we die to the lord so then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. That is what having a banner is about. Kung naatay banner, that means ang atong kinabuhi is not on our own karon. If the Lord is telling us to change things atong kinabuhi, we trust the King. Because ang atuang life is no longer circulating around atuang happiness, but it is in our service to our King. Mabito na kay banner. Useless kaya na mo banner na ako, sundalo ko, pero na ako ako ang goals. Tiwi, you are in the banner of that kingdom because you serve that kingdom under that king. And Ephesians 6 reminds us that we are in a war. But di li, physical war, wala ta nakik sumbagay o nakipag dunggaban na sa people of other faith. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the he heavenly places. We are in a spiritual warfare. Wala ta sa peace time. And we discussed about this because this is very important. Na masabda na to ang atuang kinabuhi karun. Even the lives that we have in this present generation, in the next generation, 
they are in a war. And you know this, and perhaps dili ka aware, and you must be aware that there is a constant battle, whether pandemic or dili, of the enemy destroying people's lives, destroying families, even people whom we look as we look at giants or titans in the faith fall down because of many different things. Because appeal po na sa consequences, the casualties of war. The enemy will try to put a foothold in whatever areas tong kinabuhi in order to destroy our life, to destroy our testimony. We are in a constant warfare. Don't expect that because you are serving God, na wala opposition, wala mo kalaban sa imo. No. Peter reminds us that the devil is like a prowling lion waiting for someone to devour, waiting to attack. Lion na na sa gawas, nagulat, dili na iring, dili na iru, but lion na ready to eat you, ready to destroy your life and your family. Muna, we are in a spiritual warfare. Earlier this week, I read a letter of Pastor Wang Yi. Uh, he is a Chinese pastor. Uh, this pastor actually, medyo sikat ni siya because he leads one of the biggest house churches in China. And just last year, he was sentenced nine years in, in prison because ang iyahang house church, which is very big in China, an underground church. When we say underground church, meaning wala siya nagpa-register sa, sa national, sa China's nat- national na murag, Protestant churches because what happens is if you register ka, they would regulate in more sermons, pilihan nila kung siya pwede niya preach, kung siya dili, pilihan nila kung siya pwede maging membro, kung siya dili, bantayan nila ang lihok nila, and as if sila yung bagong ginuo karon that they will only let you speak what you, what what they allow you to speak, not the words of God, but what they have approved na pwede niya ingon, that are not contrary to their beliefs. So wala niya pa register dito, and what happened was he was arrested. And when he was arrested, nagbili niya letter that after two days, pakulong ko, digyapo ko nila gawas, which means they will put me in a trial. This was three years ago. I-release ni sa kalibutan. This is, this is what happened. And I'd like to read three parts sa so long letter niya that really struck me in his ministry. He said publicly, mainly to talk about the communist regime. He said, I also believe that the persecution of the church by the Chinese communist regime is an extremely evil crime. As a pastor of the Christian church, I must turn in and openly blame such sins. The calling also requires me to violate all human laws that violate the Bible and God in a non-violent form, in peace and patience. Christ, my Savior, also asked me to joyfully bear all the cost of transgressing evil laws. But this does not mean that my personal and church disobedience is a political act in any sense of activism or civil disobedience because I have no intention of changing any of China's systems and laws. As a pastor, the only thing I care about is the disobedience of faith, the shock of simple humanity, and the testimony of the cross of Christ. As a pastor, my disobedience is part of the gospel mission. The great mission of Christ requires a great resistance to the world. The purpose of resisting is not to change the world, but to witness another world. And this is a very courageous letter. Imagine nine years in prison for following Christ, and he accepted all these things. And the reason why he accepted all these things because he knows Yahweh Nisa, he is my banner. Banan dia punto niya in prison. And that is, and this is my battle. Ugabalo siya that he is willing to lay down his life for this faith. And ang challenge siya na is that it should challenge our thought, even kita. Gamay laki inconvenience, gamay laki discomforts tong kinabuhi. Di lang mo abot ang tama nga kwarta. Di li lang masunod atong gusto na atay nawalaan isa ka gadget or na ay night traumatic event in our life and muna tong cause na to nga magpalayo ta sa Ginoo just because of that simple thing asa naman ang ato ang allegiance sa ato ang king ato if ang king would say command you to go to a place na medyo layo ug medyo kapoy ang journey would you just say ay di uganahan tanggalon na ko ning banner na ko dili pwede unsa na asa na ka na kingdom belong to you are a man with no allegiance and that means you will go into a life of senseless suffering, senseless existence, wala kay purpose yung kinabuhi. Kung ba gusto ni mo in your life and for the, your next generation? But the problem is, gihimo na to ang ginoo, not as a banner, but as a rich uncle, dato nga uncle, nga pwede nito pangayuan, o allowance, o regalo. And if dili ka ganang ti uncle, pwede ta musukol sa iya ha. And then, Tugunan niya at ihatag niya unsa ang ato ang gusto because gusto pa niya is spoil. No, Yahweh Nisai 
He is our banner. He is our life. Siya ang atong kinabuhi. Our life is secondary, even third priority, or even the last priority. The words pa ni Paul, to live is Christ. To die is gain because I will meet Christ. Siya na atong kinabuhi from this day moving forward. And we go to our last point. A banner is a rallying point for all commands. During the war, if init na kayong awa and you are losing, if the banner man or the captain would say to the banner man, retreat, retreat, mudagan ta, how do you think people would would react? Ang iya mga sundalo. O saan lang pagkabalo? Asa mudagan. In the midst of fighting, assuming na gamay lang ang variant sa height, ang saan lang pagkita, asa dapat ang captain, asa dapat, dapat mo retreat, o asa dapat mo what to whenever init na kayo ang away or di ka mo yung advance move forward attack unsa kay sundo nila could you guess the answer is the banner the banner is a rallying point meaning sa tanan commands na iatag dito ka mo duol dito ka mo follow because it will lead you where to go depende on the command so for example if na specific horn na i nagamito nila that means retreat Asa ka mo tanaw, di naman ka mo follow sa sound because a battle is very intense. Saba kayo na yung nag-shagit, na yung nag-away, na yung nag and many other sounds. And so, you would follow what you see and when you see your banner going to that direction and retreat ang gina, ginagamit na horn, mo retreat po ka dito. If it's advanced, then you follow kung asa to, you attack whatever is in the direction of asa pa ato tong banner. That is the rallying point. That is the point where you go and you follow the command. Meaning Yahweh Nisai, meaning Yahweh is your command. Siya ang command ni mo whatever He wants to do in your life. If He says stop, you stop. If He says you rest, you rest. If He says to attack, you attack. If He says na trust in me, you trust in Him. If He says undangi ng isa ka part si mo kinbu, you stop that part in your life because He is your command. In that battlefield, you follow the rallying point. Musunod ka sa banner. Di ka mapatakag. Suroy masing asa. And you do not obviously follow the banner of your enemy. Uh, either madakpan ka or patyon ka dito. And even in Psalm 20, it reminds us of that. May we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God. Set up our banners. May Yahweh fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Yahweh saves His anointed. He will answer Him from His holy heaven with the saving might of His right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of Yahweh our God. Keep in mind, name of our God, set up our banners. May God be the one who puts up our banners. May He be the one that is our rallying point. And if we only wake up that we are fighting a spiritual warfare, ug na ay banner, which is ang ginoo na pirmi na daganan, kaya na pwede na ito duulun, pwede na ito daganan in times of trouble, mas dali ning life ba, mas dali ning ato ang warfare na ato community that He has set up with all these rules and commands para dito ta mag-learn, mag-grow, and mag-depend on. Na ato Bible where we can learn about His words and who He is as a God. Na ato prayer which is our warfare walkie-talkie na mga yung tag-supply, na mga itag-tabang is direct towards the general or towards the king. Kompleto na. Because He has set up our banners. Ang problema lang, Dili ni ta mo acknowledge na mao nang kinabuhi nato. Though we carry the banner of God, we tend to still fight our own battles of warfare na dili appeal sa gusto sa Ginoo sa atong kinabuhi. And we go to Psalm 60. It reminds us, Lord, you have set up a banner for those who fear you, that they may flee to it from the bow, that your beloved ones may be delivered, give salvation by your right hand and answer us. Even Psalm 60 reminds us that natay dagana, natay duulan. And I hope we use of that that we run to the Lord, we run to the Father. Ug tanan dito na to makitaan that He will shelter us and protect us from this continuous warfare that we see in this world. So Yahweh Nisai, God is our identity, atong life, ato ang command. I hope and I pray that that would become your knowledge sa ginuo na maila-ila ni mo siya in a deep personal way that He becomes your identity, He becomes your life, and whatever He commands, you will follow. Yahweh Nisai. Let's pray to Him. Lord God, we thank You sa pag-remind sa Amwa of who You are today. Thank You for reminding us once again that this is a God that we can run to, a 
as a rallying point. This is a God na taladalaho na mo wherever we go because you are our banner and this is a God whom we have given our life to. And if buingon lang ka of whatever things in our heart that you want us to change, I pray that the community will be a community of believers who are contrite that at the word of the Lord easily we listen and forsake all these things na dapat niyaan. Lord, I pray that you do that. I pray that you strengthen our convictions, you strengthen our resolve, na may nood mi, especially that you have called us to bring you wherever we will go. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here we are, O oh God, to worship you and to declare and say that you are our God. Bow down. 
Here I am to say that you're mine, you're lovely Jesus. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. Together.